In today's episode, we're speaking to the amazing Angel Alvaro. Hopefully you pronounced the name correctly. We're going to be talking to the amazing, amazing Angel Angel. And she'll be telling us about her journey, how she started off what she did and how she's doing the work she's doing at the moment. She's an amazing energy healer, a colleague of mine with her unique gifts, but she's had quite a journey to get to where she is right now. So we'll be talking to her right now. Let's get started. Welcome, welcome. It's Girl Khan here, your money mindset expert. And today I have the pleasure and the honor of speaking to Angel Alvaro, someone who's amazing, someone who's absolutely inspirational, and someone I'm super excited to be talking about her journey, her inspirational journey, and sharing that with you guys right now. I'm listening right now. So without further ado, Angel, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gal, for this opportunity to share my journey in your podcast with your um, followers. Thank you so much for being here. I'm super excited to be speaking to you. And once we, the people have listened to this podcast, they'll understand why I was super excited. So Angel, tell us, what do you do right now? So what's your current job title? What are you doing? So currently, I am a leading life accelerator and wealth activator, coach, mentor, and master energy healer. Fabulous, fabulous. Now let's get, let's really get into the nutty gritty of your story. So how did you end up um, living in Canada and what was your path like? Where did you, where did you start and how did you end up becoming an energy healer? So I ended up in Canada because I met my soulmate, now my, be- my best friend, my, now my husband of 14 years when I was in Italy. Right. And so ended up, we got married and I had to immigrate here to be together with him. So Uh, 14 years now here in Canada. Um, How did I started being an energy healer? I've always known that I'm a healer. I was born in long lines of healers on both sides of my family, but something I resisted. (laughs) So what was your journey? What led you to to be at this point right now? I mean, you've had an an, an incredible journey. Talk us through what, what were your ups and downs and how did you end up getting to this point? Okay, so first of all, I think it would be helpful for you to know that I, I was born in poverty in the Philippines. I was the eldest of five siblings, uh, was raped at five years old. Wow. Um, so sexual trauma, massive sexual trauma that I, w- I went through and depression, suicidal thoughts and tendencies along the way because of what had happened and never really learned to trust men, especially my own father, you know. Right. Um, I would always, there was a point where I, wanted to commit suicide and there's a few times that I did uh, I can remember one of those times was yeah I was during elementary uh, there was a time where I took my father's uh, 45 caliber and I remember that was already pointed at my temple and I was ready to go for some reason how does a child find uh, you know the father's gun how did he find the father's gun in the first place well, he would always clean that in front of us. So I, and then when he's going to put it away, I know where he puts it away because I'm the eldest and he would tell me to make sure that the, our, my siblings wouldn't go there. <laughs> so I know, but he didn't <laughs> know, know what's going on in my head. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, going towards high school, it's, you know, there's really not much confidence because I grew up in an abusive environment, you know, verbal, yeah. emotional, physical and always been told never good enough. I was never wanted. My father wanted a son and he got me instead. So every day of my life, he made sure I know that I was unwanted. So to a point that I became boyish or dressed up like a boy so that I could please him, but that was not enough. Mm -hmm. Um, So with my journey, looking back, how I ended up being a healer now is that the universe will always bring you back to where you're supposed to be, to your soul's yeah. purpose, you know? Yeah. There's network marketing. There's so many ventures that I've done, ended up working overseas um, through different countries that I've been into. And that's why I ended up meeting my husband also in mm-hmm. Taiwan. Oh, no, in Italy. I work in Taiwan and in Cyprus and in Italy and then came here to Canada. So here in Canada, you know, depression was crazy. Like mm-hmm. at first I thought it's homesickness and I'm like, Come on, you've been overseas um, pretty much all your life since 19 years old. (laughs) So there shouldn't be homesickness anymore. But it hit me. It was depression. Depression. I wouldn't go out. My husband would force me to go out. When I have my first 
uh, firstborn, my daughter, my husband has to force me out to go out to the mall. I know he's tired from work, but he's like, let's go out. He'll take our daughter uh, other side of the mall so just so that I can walk on my own and just think, you know, there were times that I would tell him I want to go home or maybe I should just die because I feel like life is nothing or there's no uh -huh. purpose for me anymore in Canada. So do you think this was the, all the trauma and all the abuse they felt as a child coming to surface and it just blew up in, the, in your face? Yeah, when you, I think you, got, so. you, got, you, you basically got to Canada, which is a safe space. So now yeah. you could be open and vulnerable and face up to these old emotions. Yeah, exactly. Um, when I was in Canada, I guess I realized that, oh, wow, I have always been running away, escaping. I never wanted to stay home. The only reason I would go home is for my mom. Mm -hmm. So being in Canada, that's the furthest. And it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm safe, right? Yeah. But at the same time, I'm alone. I feel yeah. so alone. Yes, my husband's here and he's so loving and generous and kind, but I don't have my own family. I don't have my own friends. My husband's friends, that's his friends, that not, that's not mine. And for being independent for so long, since 19 years old until 30 years old, all of a sudden I have to depend on my husband on everything. Mm -hmm. Like I need to buy something for my hair or maybe clothes and I have to ask or depend on him on that. It's mm -hmm. too much blow on my ego, you know? Yes. Yeah. So postpartum depression also kick in. And um, the doctor said, well, that's normal. It's postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And my, my husband's uh, family, they're always saying, you know, you should have a second kid now. Uh, it's nice that there's a small gap. I'm like, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I just can't. Maybe we should just have one. And my husband said, it's okay. Take your time. And finally, when my daughter's five years old, I'm like, okay, fine. If I'm going to have a second child, I want a boy. Mm -hmm. So I basically manifested a son. <laughs> because before, before I got pregnant, I bought these baby shoes that's Ferrari in, and it's red. And I said, our second child is a boy. And my husband said, how sure are you? I said, I just know. And I have, we have a boy. Uh, the, force, the depression just go crazy 2015 I was diagnosed with cl clinical depression wow uh, okay road rates and suicide again wow suicidal tendencies yeah wow okay so how did you go from that state to becoming a very successful business owner and an energy healer that's just wow so how, what happened next so after the, in 2015, after I was diagnosed with uh, clinical, you know, clinically diagnosed with depressed, severe depression. Mm -hmm. um, after that, it, there's that cosmic four, four by four that I'd like to call. We had to up, uh, apply for consumer proposal here in Canada, or it's called bankruptcy anywhere in the world. Right. And that, uh, yeah, it's a cosmic four by four. It's something that I beat myself up because I know mostly my fault because of my journey wanting to be successful online you know being a successful entrepreneur but what i realized is that the universe would always always guide you towards your soul's purpose and so in 2015 looks like the universe got impatient with me already and like you know what you really gotta wake up you're not meant to do network marketing or any other things that you've been doing web yeah. design graphic design at that time you're meant to be a healer yeah. so with that hit me hard in the finances because that's the one that universe knows I don't want to go back to without money right because yep. I came from poverty yeah. so with that and like I made that vow and asked my guardian angels I'm like okay you want me to be a healer then you gotta help me with money because all my ancestors are healers but they're poor I don't want to be poor anymore I don't want to be poor I don't want to go back there and so I was crying journaling journaling and in my journal we're going to get through this. Okay, I'm going to be a healer. And then it came my path about crystal healing. So then I got certified with that. And then my massive healing journey. Um, we ended up going to a mineral show. There's this big Russian guy who said, can I see your hands? I'm like, why? <laughs> like a, a, a stranger asking you to put your palms like that in front of him. I'm like, why? And he looked at my hands and said, do you know that you're a powerful healer? Looking at my hand and doing that. I'm like, is it because I'm taking crystal healing? <laughs> and he started laughing and he said, no, you're a powerful healer because it runs in your blood. You're meant to be a healer. You've always been a healer. 
if you believe in past lives, you're a healer in your past lives. Ask your mom how many healers are in your lineage. So I asked my mom and she said, well, you met a few of them when you're a kid, they're still alive. Mm -hmm. But yes, you can uh, trace, it's a long line on both sides. My father's father was very famous when he's still alive. He's still in, he's already in that bed and people would still go to him. Mm. But they're dirt poor. So that's why I resisted being a healer. Yeah. So that's the cosmic four by four, 2015. So towards 2016, you know, as I heal myself also, I met um, a healer. But at that time, towards early 2017 already, I saw a premonition of my father already passed away. It's okay. one of my abilities. I can see things before it happens. How would you tell your family if you saw your father already dead? Yeah. I couldn't. I know that for three months, but I couldn't tell anyone and mm -hmm. until the universe did something because I'm not doing anything with it. My siblings started coming to me and said, hey, I dreamt of our dad. He's inside the coffin. What does that mean? Because they know I know something. I can do something. Yeah. yeah. I saw Jesus Christ and I saw our father in the coffin. What does that mean? I'm like, okay, I guess I have to tell them. So I told them and I said, okay. I had to go home in the, to the Philippines that time. And yeah, I, I saw what he's going on, his condition. And I know he's going. And then when he passed away, I went home for funeral, mainly to support my mom. You know, I never had that strong connection or bonding with my father. I don't know, it's probably because of the trauma and what I've been through. But I learned to forgive. I forgave him. I forgave myself. And that's the time that I really was able to rise up. And I really acknowledge my own healing journey and abilities. So in 2017, I was offered an opportunity to run a group, a group program where I can share my journey with, with manifesting because I have been able to manifest every single time. Mm -hmm. um, whatever it is that I need, it doesn't, you wouldn't think that I was born in poverty because I, would, I was always able to manifest. You're a very powerful manifester, a conscious manifester. I yeah, think exactly. You manifest, you just, you, you, you're a conscious manifester, so you manifest the things you desire rather than things you don't want. Yeah, yeah. So um, when I wanted to go to Taiwan, I know there's no money, but I'm like, I'm going to go and take the test anyway. And I, was, I got hired. I, I passed everything. And now it's like, I got a call. Okay, you're part of this batch that's living for Taiwan. Uh, prepare everything. So called my mom and said, oh, I'm going to Taiwan. And she said, how much will it cost? I'm like this much. And she said, I don't think we can help you with that because your father just spent something, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. But instead of being feeling down, I started preparing my passport and everything else that's needed. Three days before the departure, scheduled departure, my mom called me and said, we, we actually have some money. We can help you. Right. Uh, going to, to Cyprus, the same thing. I manifested that one. Um, I actually went there as a caregiver. The agent said, why would you think you would be hired? I was petite. I was really skinny, about just 100, maybe 95 pounds at that time. Oh, wow. And just 5'2". Yeah. Wow. It's like the person I'm going to take care of is like 5'8", a yeah. woman. Yeah. How would you be able to care for her? It's like, I know I'm already hired. It's like... You don't have professional experience mm -hmm. and you're up against 30 professional caregivers. I, I love your confidence. I'm like, yeah, just submit it, you know? I didn't hear from him for two weeks and came back and said, I don't know what you did, but you're the one that was chosen. That's After nice. that, that's, that's where I'm manifesting. I love it. I love it. I love exactly, it. right? It, it's like, is there some type of magic in my energy or what, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was able to go to Italy and enjoying my life there, my journey there for a year and a half. And I met my husband online. So it's like online dating, which is something I never believed in. But mm -hmm. universe is like, you know, I'll show you what you don't believe in. It works and it's possible. <laughs> and the rest is history. We're 14 years married this year. Wow. This month. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what an incredible journey that you've had with the ups and downs, but you had the ability to heal, which is, which is funny you said that, um, Angel, because I think that's what I, I, and I think you are, you're, I think, I think everyone has the ability to heal to some extent because we all, we all have the ability to, you know, use that energy in that way. Yeah. But there are people who are gifted and they're your natural born healer. And I didn't know I was a healer throughout my life. I mean, I went down the legal route. <laughs> I became a banking finance lawyer. I became a lawyer in through a jurisdiction, let alone just, you know, one. 
and I was full on to become this hotshot lawyer and the universe had a complete different plan for me all together. And now when I look back, it makes complete sense. And yeah. I said, yeah, there's a reason why this turns, those blockages came and why I was led down to this path because I had to become the healer that I am. And quite specific, I am a very specific healer. I heal your emotions, but around money. But then I've been led down this path because of my journey, or you've led down your path because of your journey. But it's, it's yeah. isn't it amazing? That when it, you is, back, yeah. it, makes so, it makes complete sense when you look back in hindsight. At the time, you're like, what is going on? <laughs> exactly. And you keep on resisting it, you know, because yeah. this is where I make money. Why would I let this go, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. But then we have soul's purpose before we're even born there's already a purpose that we chose as a soul and the universe will make it make sure that we're going to live that soul's purpose yeah. so we're well, not here just to, 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 to some extent try and fulfill it yeah so absolutely yeah exactly yeah yeah okay, so, so what would you say were your biggest mindset hurdles when you're establishing yourself as an online business person having this, you know, obviously been in all the different jobs and finally admitting to the fact that you are a healer and setting up a business around healing. Yeah. What were your biggest obstacles around that? Oh, I'm not good enough. I'm yeah. never good enough. And who, who, do, who do I think I, am I to be that healer? Yeah. Yes, the, there's these psychics and strangers telling me I'm a powerful healer, but really, I grew up hearing I'm never good enough, that I'll never amount to anything. So I had to fight that. Yeah. yeah, and I can definitely relate to that. I've I've had this not good enough or attitude all my life, and um, from other people, <laughs> and I've just proved. I, I up until recently, I was proving to them that I am good enough by overachieving. That's why I have got the grades and went off to be you know the best everything college, uni, whatever. It was to prove that I am the best. But now that that becomes redundant. That's no longer necessary. I'm not out to prove anything to anyone now. I'm just living my life purpose. But that's when you are comfortable being you, you know, your true authentic self. And I can see that with the energy now. It's, you're so comfortable being angel. You're so comfortable being your true authentic self. Other people's opinion don't matter anymore. Yeah. And therefore, you are good enough and you are, you are enough. But how did he change that, though? How did he change that idea that you definitely are enough and you're good enough? Because I think a lot of people listening to this can relate to it. How can they change this, their mindset around... I'm not good enough to, yes, I am enough. Yeah. Well, first of all, I am a big believer of personal self-development. Uh, my self-development journey started in 2000, 2000, year 2000. But I noticed that there's something missing with a personal development. I, it felt like it's a band-aid, you know. I've been doing everything. I'm a good student at that time. Yeah. Nothing's working. Affirmation doesn't work for me. Mm. Like, I'm wasting my energy, right? You know what really put things together for me is when I ended up doing my energy healing, my energy healing work, healing my sexual trauma, healing all of the trauma I've been through from all of the abuse, the physical abuse, verbal abuse, mental abuse, and emotional abuse that I've been through. Um, healing the betrayal because I've been betrayed several times, but then I've seen my parents being betrayed how many times? Mm. So that's like, okay, it trends in the family, right? It's so healing that. I call that imprint. So if your parents, if you've witnessed or you know your parents have been betrayed and you've imprinted that into your energy, you will attract circumstances which cause the betrayal. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I prayed for a healer that could help me. Is there someone that could help me? Because I know doctors couldn't, couldn't no. understand what I'm going through. And I was led to this healer in 2017. And that's when really my healing journey, that's, I call it massive sexual trauma healing journey because mm -hmm. that's when it really helped me break through to that next level. I started to be able to start charging for my services. Yeah. At that time, I started charging. The only amount I was confident was $90 <laughs> per hour. Wow. From there to now, when your price is around $25,000. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so exactly. what a journey from charging $90 to now saying my starting packages. My, for example, I mean, I have no problems uh, sharing that, that. My starting packages you know, for one-to-one -one work is around $25,000, similar yeah. to the same as yours. And so that's quite a journey from $90 to $25,000 um, um, 25, pounds or dollars or whatever, you know, whatever currency you use. Okay. So now that we've figured out that out, so what would say, what would you say that now that once you were able to change your mindset, how did that really support you in building a business? How did that help? 
Well, mindset. For me, I believe it's mind, body, and spirit. There's that three pillar every time. Well, me, you can't me, just do I mind and body. Let me say, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm, when I mean mindset, I mean the energy. Because I, mean, okay. I use secular terms mindset, but as you know, as far as, you know for, for my work, and you're, you're part of the mastermind, so you know that I change your mindset by changing your energy. So with being an energy healer, we primarily work on your energy and the mindset just follows. Yeah. So when I see, when I'm, when I'm saying, you know, your mindset shift, I actually, actually mean your energy. The energy. Shift. So once it's okay. happened, how does that help you and support you in building your business? It, it plays a big way, you know, because our energy speaks before we open our mouths. Absolutely. So, and then my mindset, I know that it just, the, the shifts from with my mindset, with my thoughts and beliefs just start, only started or only happened with shifting my energies yeah. so that's why energy work is so important so if you're thinking that you've been doing everything but is it reading books and just attending maybe even you you do nlp and hypnosis but you're not shifting your energy it's not going to do anything i'm an NLP, nlp practitioner yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I mean, I've, I've, I've studied NLP and EFT and all of that before I, I studied energy. And that I, I would say it doesn't work. I, I just think it's a very slow process. And uh, with that, it's like walking towards your goal. But at least those people are walking towards their goals if they're consistent with those practices. The only difference is if they come to someone like you or me and we're, we're, we're helping them heal the energy, shifting the energy, and that's the difference, like walking to your goal or getting jumping in a Ferrari and zooming, you know, driving towards your goal. That's the big difference. So I won't say it doesn't work. It's just a very slow, laborious process. And that's why majority of people, you know, sort of fail because if they just, are not able to be consistent enough and it's too slow a process for them to see results wouldn't you agree yeah exactly and we are all impatient yeah. <laughs> we're impatient <laughs> to get results we want it today so, we want to yesterday like i've been doing this thing and there's no results i want it now but it's just you know energy shifting your energy really is what i've seen that really helped me because that's what helped me shift my pricing to from 90 dollars per hour to ended up going $333 and then $555 to now charging $25,000 for my packages. Yeah. I never thought I could do that, you know? So I know I broke that pattern with my ancestors of healers who were poor and never charged for their healing. Yeah. I know I'm meant to do that and show them and the ones that are going down from me. Because there's no need for healers like you and I to be poor anymore. <laughs> we exactly. can make money and serve and live our life purpose, and we can do both things simultaneously. So this is where I come in to you know, help healers like yourself to actually know that you can charge and that you can have such abundance in your life while you're you're still you know fulfilling your life purpose of being a healer, which is awesome, awesome. Okay, so what would be your parting um, tip or an advice to somebody listening to this and thinking, oh God, this sounds really amazing, but. I don't even know where to start. So Angel, what would you say to someone who's, who's listening and who can really relate to your story? For me, the one thing I would really um, tell you is be open-minded and give it a try with energy healing. Mm -hmm. I have a client who doesn't understand energy healing and she jumped all over it when I was just starting in 2017. Mm -hmm. In fact, she's still working with me. She wouldn't leave me. <laughs> I said, you're ready to go on your own and go find somebody else. And I said, no. Um, I'm where, where I am right now charging, she's charging $10,000 now because of you, she said, but she jumped head on as she says, because she knows that if it's not going to kill me, I'm going to go and do it. Yeah. Do yourself a favor and have check on it, ship your energy because it's everything. Everything is about energy. You are energy. We are all energy. So your mindset, your beliefs, everything in your life will ship when you shift your energy, find someone that you resonate with and that you trust because i know that in the healing industry there's a lot of negative stigma and i'm sure gal also sees that right um being a highly psychic healer and there's a lot of stigma with that stuff but it's so important that you listen to your heart and find someone that you can trust yeah I agree. I agree. And I think energy healing, this is why I, I push forward that energy healing is the way forward. If you want to get quantum results, if you want to go ahead at quantum speed, everything else does work, but it's a slow process. Okay. So thank you for so much sharing with you, know, sharing your journey, sharing your, your ideas and thoughts and experiences with us. Tell us where we can find you online. And by the way, everything that um, Angel will mention will be on the show notes as well, but I want Angel to just share some uh, links for us right now. 
So you can find me if you'd like to connect or you'd like to learn more about what I do. You can find me at angelalvaro.com or you can also find me in Facebook, um, Angel Alvaro fan page or just Angel Alvaro. Um, there's a lot of Angel Alvaros that I see there because it's Spanish. Uh, it's a Spanish name, but you'll you'll see me there because it says there leading life accelerator and wealth activator codes. Accelerator because you get accelerated results. Instead of getting your results in 10 years, you get it like in three months to yeah. one year. Mm -hmm. That's why um, actually three psychics um, channel that title for me. I'm like me, accelerator, who am I? Right. So that's that imposter syndrome. Yeah. And the energy are, as, an, as a powerful energy healer you are and i that's what i see myself i am a catalyst i, I always say i play a very small role in mm -hmm. someone's transformation but i yeah. do play a role it's, it's a catalyst and as you know in science catalysts speed things up yeah, and that's yeah. what you and i do and you definitely i think the title accelerator definitely fits you completely because that's what you do get amazing results for your clients thank you so much and remember everybody who's listening these links will be are in the are in the show notes please go and click that on um, those links, links and go and connect to angel both and um, go and have a bit check out our website and then go and connect with our facebook now thank you so much for sharing your experience in time and with us angel it's been a pleasure having you here i'm sure you've given so much inspiration to so many people listening and for those of you who are listening to us right now thank you so much for being with us on another episode on friday feature with gul khan i will be back with on another friday with someone someone else who's just as amazing talking about their inspirational story sharing their experiences and allowing you to know that there's a there's light at the end of the tunnel and that you too can change your mindset change your energy and achieve your results and achieve your desires until the next time we meet this is gul khan signing off take care and bye for now